Hello and welcome to a video tutorial of the click-through rate booster. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can work with the software. So when you start the software, it's a good idea to actually right-click the software and run it as an administrator so that you can be sure that the software has all of the privilege it needs to read and write from the files that it works with. Okay, so when you start the software for the first time and you've registered it, it's going to be looking something like this. This is known as your dashboard and it's going to be showing you all of the projects that you've created. We have a created any projects so I'm going to be going ahead and showing you how you can create those projects now when it comes to the settings and um, best practices then I'm going to be doing a different video for you so please do watch that video to make sure that you understand exactly how you can get the best from this software for for now though and for this video I'll be showing you how you can actually work with this so I'm gonna click on add project when I click on add project I can create a Google ranker project or a YouTube ranker project YouTube ranker projects will work within a moment for now let's have a look at a Google Ranker project. You can do map searches as well. We're not going to be doing a map search for this one. We'll be creating a regular one. What this allows us to do is it allows us to search Google for our keyword. And it's very important that our website is ranking in the top 10 pages. And if it is ranking in the top 10 pages, we're able to search Google for our keyword, find that website and stay on that website for a duration of our choice before we go ahead and click an internal link and stay on that for a duration of our choice as well. We can also visit competitors first. I'll be showing you both of these in action. So for this, I'll use my own website as a demo. So I'm gonna call the project Abbas. I'm gonna use google.com as the search engine and the target URL is abbasravji.com. Now I can do this as an exact match. Now you'd be using an exact match when let's just say, for example, you have two URLs that are ranking in Google. One is called abbasravji.com and the other one is called abbasravji. Uh, forward slash one dot html for example now if i wanted to make sure that the software always goes over to this one so we're sending the signals over to this url then i can click on exact match but i don't want to do that i'm telling the software here now by not doing exact match is that any url with a com in there gets found then go over to that okay you can add your keywords here one per line obviously these are going to be keywords that you're already ranking for for this video I'm, or for this project i'm just going to be doing um i'm going to be building up some branding branded searches so i'll just be doing abbas ravji and for a quick demo as well okay so the number of visits this is how many visits you want before this project has been completed so i'm going to say i want 500 for example now it's asking you how much you want on a day so how many visits do you want on a daily basis um before this um project stops getting daily clicks to it. So I'm gonna say something like three, for example. Now I'm gonna be showing you in the best practice video how to determine how many visits you should, you should be getting per day and how many visits you should, you should be getting per month. It doesn't look natural when you're getting lots and lots of clicks, especially if the search volume for your keywords is very low. So we actually take you through this in the best practice video. So do keep, uh, um, so do take a look at that video as well. Okay, time of visit. I'm just going to do a quick five second visit and I'm going to do a maximum of six seconds. So this is minimum and maximum. Um, the time of internal visit, I'm going to do um, three seconds and four seconds. Now, obviously, it's going to be um, ideal for you to make it much higher so that you increase the time on site and the dwell time. Um, the time between Google pages, I'm going to do one and two seconds. So if the if, if our website wasn't found on the first page and it needs to go over to the second page of Google, how many seconds should it wait on each page? Okay, um, and we also have a delay between actions. So after it's done the first action, should it do the action straight away or should there be a delay? So I'm gonna do a quick delay of let's just say one and two seconds. Now I can do a mobile search or desktop search. We'll do desktop search first, see how this works, and then we'll go over <clears throat> and have a look and see exactly um, how you can actually work with this. Or we'll see how you can work with mobile searches and competitors as well. So I'm going to do that. The project's been saved. As you can see, we come back over to the dashboard. I can now click on Abbas and I can view the browser if I want to. Or I can disable it if I want to and not view it. For this demo, we're going to say let's view it. And I'm going to click on start. What's going to happen now is this is going to go over to Google. It's going to type our keyword. It's going to find our website and it's going to go ahead. Well, it has a random delay every time it lands onto Google, guys, before it visits our website. Now it's going to visit our website. It's going to remain on our website. It scrolls around on the website as well, guys, randomly based on how long your delay is. So the longer you delay, the more scrolling happens. Um, and then it's going to go ahead and click an internal link. And then it remains on this page for some time, scrolling around on here as well. Um, and then it's going to go ahead and 
close it off. Okay, so we'll just wait until this closes down, but we've told the software to actually do to, to do two daily visits and we've given it a very small um, action time between actions. Um, so as you can see, it's got the first one there. I'll click on stop though. Um, so I've stopped it from doing that. And what we'll do now is we'll create another project. Okay, no, we won't create another project. What we'll do is we'll actually change this project over and we'll do a mobile search now. Um, and I'll click on update. And what you'll notice is when I click on start, um, it's going to be using um, a mobile browser type down here, guys. Um, and the way we do this is we use mobile user agents. So I'm going to actually click on stop down here, guys. I'm going to intervene with this and click on stop. Um, and I'm going to be showing you something else as well. So we'll do a desktop search, but this time we're going to go over to visit competitor first. So what this does is it's going to visit a competitor um, and then it's going to click the back button and then it's going to go ahead and visit our website and it's going to remain on our website. And obviously with the duration that you're going to put down here going to be much more large. Um, it's going to show signals to Google that your website was fulfilling the searcher's need and the first website that it went to didn't. So I'll click on start. Obviously, you're not going to see the long duration um, down here because we haven't done that. But the first thing it's going to do is going to find a competitor to go over and go, go over to. So as you can see, it's gone over to a competitor here. And then it's going to do a bounce back over onto Google. And then it's going to go over to our website and then it's going to remain on here and Google gets to see these signals um, and it's going to show Google that we're fulfilling the searchers need more than what the other website was as well guys okay so this is all what rank brain does it understands and it sees this and it looks at how people are behaving around all of this and it lets you do it so for the next one guys what we're going to do is we're going to create <clears throat> um, a map project so what we'll do is we'll just call this restaurant um, I'll go over to Bing, uh, sorry, Google, and I'll go over to, um, I'll do, uh, let's do Chinese restaurant Peterborough. Okay, so this is going to be our keyword. So I'm going to take this here now. So I'm going to show you how to do a map, guys. So our keyword is going to be Chinese restaurant Peterborough. It's very important when you're doing a map search, then you're going to be that this keyword prompts maps to get shown. Now your video, now your map listing doesn't need to rank in the top three here. It can be anywhere inside of the map. So for example, let's just say, for example, we wanted to go over to this one here, guys. What we need to do now is copy exactly the exact title that Google shows here. Um, and then we go over and we add that as the target name so this is the target name it should map the listing down here and the url is this here guys so when i click on this here give it a second i'm going to go ahead and copy this url now and what i'm going to do now is add the url down here okay so what happens guys is when you're working with proxies sometimes it doesn't prompt the maps to show okay so what we do is we have google map retries because depending on what kind of proxies you have some of our beta testers and some of our guys were actually using this as 100 200 plus because it would continue to let the software go through until it does prompt maps so that the software doesn't make it disabled Okay, so um, this is all the details that we need and everything else is exactly the same as, as, as I mentioned earlier. How many visits do you want? So let's just say, for example, we want 20 visits for this project. How many visits do you want a day? Let's just say, for example, on two visits a day. The time of the visit on the website, let's just say three seconds. We're going to do a very short one here again, guys. Um, the time of internal visit, we'll just say something like two seconds and three seconds. Um, and time between Google and here as well. And we'll do a desktop search and I'm going to click on save. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disable, I'm, I'm going to uncheck this. Now, of course, you can work with multiple concurrent um, projects at the same time, guys. And all you have to do is um, enable this section here to tell the software what you're doing. But as you can see down here, this is GMAP. Okay, I'm going to close out of here and I'm going to click on start. And we're going to see exactly what the software does down here. So it's done Chinese restaurant. It hasn't found it on the top three. So it's come over to this page here and it's going to find the listing inside of here. I'm just going to go ahead and visit the website. As you can see here, it scrolled around the website for a little while and takes a bit of time on the website, clicks an internal link, and then it's going to go ahead and close out of it, guys. Um, so this is how you can work with Google Maps search and clicks as well, guys. Um, so I will clicked on stop there um, just to stop it. And I clicked on stop before it was able to update the stats down here, guys, because it updates the stats at the end. Um, but not to be alarmed because I intervened and clicked on stop anyway. 
Okay, so this is how you work with Google Maps, guys. Um, really, really cool, really straightforward. Uh, one final thing, guys. Let's just say, for example, you were visiting a competitor and you had multiple websites ranking inside of Google and you didn't want to use your own website, a, a different website. So let's just say, for example, you owned abbasravji.com and you owned, I don't know, nichegenetics.com. Um, and for keyword research, abbasravji.com and nichegenetics.com were both ranking and you wanted to visit a competitor first and you didn't want to use niche genetics as a competitor so then you could add niche genetics down here so then the software will know not to use niche genetics as a competitor bounce before it goes ahead and visits your website guys okay so that's really really cool now let's go over and create a, a YouTube ranker project again I'm gonna call this um, anything I want so I'll call this keyword research I've got a keyword research video I'm gonna add my key I'm gonna add my keyword down here that I want to rank for uh, or I want to increase rankings for so I'll type in um, keyword research software. Oops. Okay, and the target URL is going to be the URL of the video. So I'm going to go over to YouTube and I'm going to type in keyword research software. Oops. Okay, and I'm going to look for my video down here. Here we go, here's my video. I'm gonna go over to the video. I'm gonna copy this URL down here and I'm gonna add this URL over onto here. And it's gonna ask me now, how many number of visits do I want for this project? I'm gonna say 50. How many daily visits do I want? Let's just say one. Um, the time of visit, so obviously how long do you want the software to stand and play this video for? I'm gonna say I want it to play for two seconds. And here I'm gonna say I want it to play for a maximum of three seconds and the max page is to search so when we're doing a, a search inside of YouTube um, as you can see down here um, it has an infinite scroll but when we code it we can actually get the pages done down here so these are actually pages that get prompted to show more things down here so we prompt it guys so every page really is a new prompt to show more of the actual results okay so you can do that down here guys and tell the software how many pages to do and the delay between there as well if you want to do a search and click or you want to do a direct play so we'll do a search and click first and then we can go ahead and do a direct play so i'm going to go ahead and turn that off i'm going to select this here and I'm gonna click on start. And what you'll notice is it's gonna go over to YouTube. It's gonna do a search. It's gonna find our keyword. Uh, it's gonna find our video. It's gonna play the video. And of course, guys, if you have a longer duration, then all these video views are gonna be classed as views as well, uh, which is brilliant. So I'm gonna click on stop. Okay, it's automatically stopped there, which is brilliant because we told it only to do one. What we're gonna do now is tell the software to do a direct play. Now we can do a direct play. When we do a direct play, then we visit the video directly. And we actually have a referrer section down here um, where you can add whatever URLs you want down here that will be used as a referrer. So I'll click on direct play and click on start. And what you'll notice is this directly goes over to the video now, and it's gonna be able to boost those views and views for us. Um, and it's gonna be showing YouTube as if it's the the, the result or the, um, it actually came from whatever referrers you added down here. So anyway, this is how you work with the software guys. You can always export your projects as well. You can select all of your projects down here and click on export. And if you have a VA that's working with this as well, or maybe you're working with it on a VPS, you can then go ahead and import those projects as well. And if you have multiple projects that you want to add at the same time, just download the sample file. When you download the sample file, you'll be able to see exactly how it looks and you'll be able to do exactly the same, fill it out, import Import the data inside of here and work with this and all of your logs and everything are going to be down here guys this shows you a small log but inside of the app folder you'll have a logs file and this log file has many more details down here so if you ever come and have issues with the software then send us over the log file so we know exactly what's happening so thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video